Mr. Gardner. More than 70 percent of farm subsidies go to the largest 10 percent of farm businesses. Would you support cutting subsidies? Thank you, Keith, and thank you, Christine. You know, agriculture is the lifeblood of this state. Uh, I come from a, a proud community that is very rich in agricultural heritage. Uh, working at the Implement dealership, learning a lot about agriculture, le learning what it takes to help agriculture successful in this country, farmers and ranchers successful in this country. And one of the things that is so complicated about our system, and it goes back to the 1996 Farm Bill, when it created a series of, of Freedom to Farm, followed up by the 2002 Farm Bill, which created a series of, of subsidy payments, a series of a loan deficiency payments, counter cyclical payments. Uh, the World Trade Organization had payments of green box, amber box, yellow box systems, and it was to compete with people like the European Union who were heavily subsidizing their agriculture. As a result, our farm heritage ended up, our farm communities ended up with things like counter cyclical payments. And so I look forward to working with people like the Colorado Farm Bureau on an adequate safety net for Colorado farmers and ranchers. Christine, would you like uh, input from the other candidates on the question? Or would you like to move on to another question? And we'll work the panel back the other way. Keep on? Okay, another question from Christine. You can be here for your choice. And candidates, let's see if we can move once again very quickly. Let's see if we can make it back through the panel before we do closing statements. Okay. Martin, could you define your vision for growing are uniquely poised right now to change the way we power this country. And Northern Colorado and the 4th Congressional District in particular has unparalleled resources for wind, for solar, for biomass, for geothermal. Um, and we need to make sure that we are investing in these technologies because not only will they provide the jobs of the future, uh, but also they will help reduce our crippling dependence on foreign oil. Right now, we import over a billion dollars a day in oil from overseas. Some from countries that don't share our values. Some of that same money goes into the very hands of the terrorist group that we are fighting, and it has to stop. If you look at Logan County um, in the 4th Congressional District, just that last year, they, have, they received over $3 million in issues of property tax revenue from the wind, over a million dollars in land overseas. It's not just good for the environment, it's good for our national security, and it's good for jobs. Magic word of wind. Mr. Gardner, you've had something to say about wind. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, thank you. I generally defer to Congress on matters that are full of wind. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I would like to address an issue that the Congresswoman Martin had said earlier, and that is dealing with a bill that I introduced to make sure that we were protecting private property rights on the Eastern Plains. It has absolutely nothing to do with taxes. If you read the Colorado Constitution, you know that that to be uh, untrue. And so again, I would like to say, I talk a little bit about energy. In the Colorado legislature, I created the Colorado Clean Energy Development Authority, which is a way to bring private investment to help create renewable energy, clean energy opportunities. I also made sure that we had chances to develop traditional energy resources in the state. We can do it responsibly. And we have the opportunity with the American Energy Plan to make sure that we are developing jobs and weaning ourselves off of energy that comes from overseas. We can do that. But if you look at policies like the cap and trade bill, it will hurt our economy. But don't just take that word from the think tanks in Washington, D.C. Take it from our neighbors in rural Colorado. Here's a letter from Highline Electric Association, an REA on the Eastern Plains, where it says no matter where you stand on climate legislation, this bill, as now drafted, will cause major economic harm in northeast Colorado and southwest Nebraska. If you irrigate your farmland, you're going to pay $1,700 more per meter. This is going to drive up the cost of fertilizer, of farm equipment. We can do better, but we don't need to do it with the greatest tax increase in the country's history.
goes across your property. Thank you. And if you read the Colorado Constitution, it says that you can't create brand new taxes without a vote of the people. And that's not the bill. The bill doesn't talk anything about taxes. The Constitution, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, says if you're going to increase taxes, it's a vote of the people. Once again, read the bill. <laughs> Parkinson's disease. 
So every time he went to pay, his, his hands would shake. Uh, there was a big change. And uh, my own father had Parkinson's disease. And I remember how it robbed a very proud and independent man of his dignity. So we have a policy in my store. Whatever I don't want, it costs exactly a dollar. Because after all, a dollar bill is easier to manage for shaking hands than this change. And that is what I learned in business that you can turn a profit, keep to a budget, and give a man his dignity, all at the same time. And if we can do that in business, then we can certainly do it in government as well. I talk a lot about my experience as a business owner because it defines who I am as a person. I spent 22 years in business, 24 years as a mother, and just under two as an elected official. I am blessed with three wonderful children, with a husband who has loved me for more than 30 years. I believe that we need to govern <coughs> with faith in the fundamental decency of all human beings and with optimism for the potential of the future of this great country. I humbly ask for your vote this November. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 